The world's most expensive blood is, surprisingly, the blood from a 450 million year old living fossil. From one of these guys, a horseshoe crab. Oh, these guys look so cute. I mean, look at their faces. I'm just gonna turn one over and oh my God. <laughs> I was not expecting that. So for now, let's just keep him flipped back over on his front and then let's just pet him on the head and pretend that never happened. So yes, there's very good reason that the blood of these animals is so sought after. They're very blue blood, which is quite unusual. And we're going to find out today why their blood is so expensive. Hello, welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank. And yes, we're talking about these little guys today. I think we all know that some of our most vital needs are met by the power of science. Things which are perhaps taken for granted by most people. But for others, certain precious resources are needed to keep things going. In this case, it's the desperate need for us to collect the blood of a horseshoe crab. Horseshoe crabs are marine arthropods. They are, however, related much more to arachnids, such as spiders and scorpions, than they are any crabs or crustaceans, despite the name. These little guys are found in shallow coastal waters in sandy, muddy places, just pretty much chilling in the sand, living their best life. We do have fossil records for these guys going back about 240 million years ago. These things are so odd looking and are really nothing like anything else that we've seen in the animal kingdom. I'm surprised that if these things are that old, that they've managed to stay alive so long and are still around today. Particularly due to the fact that we as humans are terrible people and are pretty much destroying their natural habitats. Despite that, they are still around, they're still in the wild, and despite their declining numbers, they are still going strong. However, things changed very quickly when we realised that their blood is literally a miracle cure. Well, not so much a miracle cure, but something that would help us have a miracle cure. And you know what? This sounds great, but it's also quite sad as their survival was not really a top priority for humans. Okay, so don't ask me how we found this out. Someone was obviously curious to poke around and see what they could find, but effectively the proteins in the blood of the horseshoe crab are found to be very valuable for reasons I will go into detail with right now. The discovery that changed everything came about when it was found that the horseshoe crab contained a special clotting agent which can be used to make a mixture called Limulus amoebicit lysate, commonly known as LAL. The importance of this changed the medical field forever, as their blood has something called amoebocytes, which play a similar role to that of white blood cells in the bodies of vertebrates, defending the organism against pathogens. Therefore, LALs can be used in conjunction with a vaccine or medical device to determine if it has any contamination prior to use. If it does, this not only encases any bad bacteria in a membrane, but also acts as a warning system to ensure that this contaminated vaccine should not be used. These LALs were basically approved in the 70s and have been used ever since. Like I said, this has been revolutionary and now we know what we need to do to test to make sure that things like needles and other medical devices are safe to use before we start jabbing people with them. Ah, the wonders of science. Where would we be without those little horseshoe crabs? Yeah, pretty cool stuff. So we know that what we're using is safe and sterile and basically that we can just start using other medical interventions as and when we need to. This magic blue blood formula has basically now been used by the medical industry ever since to continue to produce LALs today. This does require, however, the harvesting of the blood of the horseshoe crab. And this is where it gets really sad because, I mean, these poor little guys have to get harvested for blood for our benefits, which as you can imagine is a major ethical dilemma because on the one hand, these LALs are revolutionary and is really, really important to us. But at the same time, you're gonna have to make these little guys suffer and basically harvest them for their own blood, which sounds pretty awful, but that's just the way things are at the moment. As you might imagine, the demand for this blood is high, with the animals being collected and bled for their blood. And then after some bloodletting, they are released back into the sea. It is said that the majority of the bleeds do not result in the horseshoe crab from dying, but this is dependent on how much blood is extracted from the horseshoe crab. New studies have shown that there is a mortality rate of about 10 to 25% of all harvested horseshoe crabs and that they may die within the next few days following a harvesting, 
which in my books is 10 to 25% too much. Yeah, that's pretty awful, but for the ones that survive, I mean, the whole experience can't be very pleasant to begin with. I imagine it's probably quite traumatic, actually. You just get taken up, bled for a few days, and then let back into the sea like nothing happened. Particularly when you find out that the blood harvesting takes about 10 to 30% of all the blood inside the horseshoe crab, which certainly can't be healthy. On top of this, studies have shown that the bleeding of the horseshoe crabs also results in female horseshoe crabs being unable to spawn as many eggs as they normally would in the wild, affecting their reproduction. What makes matters worse is that horseshoe crabs are actually used as bait in some parts of the world, particularly when fishing for eel. So despite the fact that they say that they release them back into the wild, the reality of a lot of this is that they may simply just sell them to the fishermen and then they're used as bait. So once they're being bled for their precious blue blood, they then get sold and then used as bait, which um, is not a dignified or good way to go. So I know what you're asking. Surely after five decades of having this blood and bloodletting these little guys, surely we've got an alternative that we can use. Something that doesn't require this practice to keep going. Well, not quite. Surely after five decades, they found a suitable synthetic alternative to using the LALs. And I'm glad you asked because yes, the use of horseshoe crab blood for harvesting is thankfully decreasing, as there has been developments in labs showing that a synthetic alternative could be used and would work. This would therefore reduce the need for the horseshoe crab to nearly zero, if this was approved. And that's the problem, if it's approved. There's a lot of hurdles that you have to pass before something like this can be used pretty much widespread on the market. Whilst this alternative seems ready to go, it cannot be used widely until it is approved by relevant regulators. This includes the US Food and Drug Administration, who have yet to approve the use of such an alternative, even saying in 2020 that there is a significant scrutiny that needs to happen to overcome and show that it would be safe and effective to compete with the use of actual horseshoe crab blood. This is despite the fact that European regulators have already approved it. Just saying. Maybe it's just the US Drug Administration saying that they want to hold on to this profitable venture as long as possible. Who knows? But there is certainly still a lot of hurdles in the way before we're at a point where these little guys can go free and don't have to be hassled by us all the time trying to get their precious blue blood from them. It also doesn't help that the use of LALs was very much needed in the development and administering of vaccines for that very recent pandemic that we don't mention the name of. So effectively to put further use and demand on the need for LALs and as a result, the need to harvest more horseshoe crab blood. Oh, poor little guys. I mean, that's kind of where we stand at the moment. For many places in the world, this animal is still harvested for its blood. We have a synthetic alternative which pretty much works and is on the horizon, but with a lot of red tape in the way, that's not getting through anytime soon. Until the medical profession can show beyond all doubt that the use of something synthetic will be a complete and necessary replacement to avoid any pitfalls or problems. So close, yet so far. And that is why this stuff is so expensive and the reason that we still harvest it because, well, we need it and it's valuable. So there's the answer for you. Sad, but true at the end of the day. If you guys enjoyed that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.